Hello and good morning everyone. Good to see you. Sorry about the all caps in chat. I didn't mean to yell and scream in your ear, but it's good to have you here. Uh, Paul Tranny going to dive into not only what's new in design, but specifically zoop, what's new in Illustrator. Uh, yeah, good morning, Caps Lock Paul. Yes, <laughs> it's early for me. It's so early, but I'm glad you're here. Welcome, everybody. We're going to dive into what's new in Illustrator. And this is going to be a lot of things that, um, that you just might have missed um, over the years, quite frankly. And of course, the new features, which are pretty exciting. Uh, just things that people have asked for as well, just so you know. You can see this fancy video playing in the background. I'm going to get into all these detail details as well. Cloud Documents is one. As you can see, we'll dive into that because that's probably... Uh, uh, good morning. <laughs> uh, big deal um, for the many things it could do. Okay, even loading the start screen is 10 times fa faster. We have the old canvas, now it's 100 times larger as well. So you can make that big, gorgeous artwork for whatever you want. So that's a top request. Also that real-time drawing and editing as well, I'm gonna get into that. Uh, so basically things will render real-time as you scale them and, or distort them, uh, whatever the case may be. So. I think it's going to be pretty fun, and I'm going to cover, beyond this video, uh, I'm going to cover what um, is available in, uh, also a little bit of what's in uh, Illustrator on the iPad. So hopefully that works for you. Oh yeah, I'm so excited about this. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in to, let's, uh, I don't know, dive in, shall we say? Dive in. Splash, here we are. Welcome everyone, and uh, good to have you here. So we'll dive into this. What's up, Howard, good to see you. Uh, this is the goal, right? So I've actually had a lot of fun with uh, Illustrator on the iPad, just just so you know, just to be quite honest. Um, uh, just because it makes line work a lot easier uh, using a pencil and uh, Apple Pencil, that is and just drawing right on the screen. So it's a bit nice for me, just so you know. Uh, but let's kind of pick this apart. Uh, here's kind of what I have for um, this particular uh, drawing. Happens to be a koi fish, right? I think it's looking pretty good. Let's check the canvas size, by the way. There it is. Okay, good. So far, so good. Uh, it's pretty large, right? Overall, this is actually just a file that's sitting on my desktop, right? It's called Fish2, right? Saving it like so. Uh, uh, yeah, Carol Pro, want to do uh, new things in Photoshop 3D. So think of dimension. We could talk about a dimension all day long because I think con connection between dimension and uh, Illustrator is pretty strong, right? So uh, let's do a save as. So that's what you should be asking. You should be asking a stream for dimension, which we'd be happy to do. Always open to requests. Guess what? I'm not going to save to my desktop. It's save to cloud document right here. Here we have it available to you today. Save to cloud documents, just like so. We'll call this K O I F I S H. -S -H. It's supposed to be a koi fish. Looks a little bit more like a, a goldfish, to be honest with you. So, but let's save that file. Where did it go? Right, let's <laughs> go to file open. Right, open cloud documents. You can see that it's right here and it's actually being synced. But what I like to do is check it in the browser. So this is where it gets to be pretty powerful. So check this out. We'll go out here to uh, assets.adobe.com cloud documents if you wanna get right there, but basically it's this tab right here right? And uh, you can see in the number of the fish that I was working on. We'll just give that a second. In fact, let's just hit refresh. We'll see it appear in this in this browser window. Okay. But the cool thing is I can always take a look right up here. Sure enough, it's an Illustrator uh, cloud file, right? And I'll be able to share that with you in a second. Uh, hello, Sylvia, sorry, 
from Spain. Uh, good to have you here. Yeah, character animator is another one. Like everything starts, I feel like, in Illustrator. Then you bring it into Dimension. Then you bring it into character animator. Or you grab that character animator model and you uh, bring it on out. So this is pretty complex, by the way. So we'll wait for this to sync, by the way. I want to kind of show you some of the real-time editing while this actually syncs over real fast. Uh, again, this is, it might be a large file. There's a lot of detail in here, quite frankly. Um, but I could take this fish, right? Here it is, my lovely fish. Hopefully I don't have anything locked. And if I decide I want to scale or distort this fish, okay, right over here, and grab any one of these scale tools, shear tool. In fact, I can get a free transform tool, right, and distort it like so, right? And as I start to distort it, you notice you won't see anything initially. Let's take a look at this. This is really a big file. There's a lot going on. So this shadowing is what you're seeing right now. You see that blue like so, right? So let's just undo that. We'll go to Illustrator. We'll go to Preferences. We'll go to Performance. There we go. Making sure real-time drawing and editing are on. So let's click right here. Make sure right in here that it's selected, real-time drawing and editing. And then notice this part, when when it's on, if lag has found the drawing and editing experience was changed to the non-real time. So, um, so that's kind of what is happening. If your um, graphics are so complex, we're not gonna slow down your machine just for the sake of real time editing. We're gonna default back to the non-real time uh, is what will happen sometimes. And make sure uh, GPU is on, right? So all this stuff, Check that box in preferences, uh, and then you're viewing on GPU is what's happening now. So if I select that, I wanna make sure we're viewing on a GPU. That's usually uh, set by default. So notice as I scale this, right, we're gonna get, it's gonna say, hey, you know what? This is pretty complex what's happening right now. Wait for it. There we go. There we go. So that's essentially what's happening there, right? If I take something like the eye, for instance, let's come right in here. I want to make just the eye larger. And I have this part. Let's deselect everything. The eye, ba 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 ba. Like all these different parts. As I scale this up, you see that real time uh, rendering that's happening, right? So again, just two ways of working with files, right? It's always gonna default if it's too complex, like a fish that has thousands of vectors, right? I can just scale that up a touch or make it a little bit smaller. I think when you make the eyes look smaller, it makes the fish look a little bit bigger, right? I can make that adjustment. Uh, 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 does this work on the free on the uh, excuse me freeform gradient tool? Yes, it does because this is actually using the freeform gradient tool. Just so you know, which is something that you should be aware of. I think we publicized it a lot, but just in case you're not familiar, if you missed it, open up. I typically open up the gradient panel, right? So go down here. Let's select this lovely. Um, yeah, here we go. Look at this, you could tell that it's a freeform gradient just by this thumbnail, right? And if we take a look at it, in fact, we'll go in here, we'll edit gradient. You could see this is made with a freeform gradient, a lot of them. I used it as like the line work right in here to kind of jump in and change accordingly, right? So again, I was able to add that highlight right in here, thanks to the freeform gradient tool. If I wanna add another little, give it a little rosy cheek, we can do that, jump in. Now it has a nice, lovely, like rosy cheek. Actually makes his like jowl kind of stand out a little bit more. Uh, we can always scale that down or scale it up, kind of its impact on the surrounding um, uh, color stops around it as well. And that, that looks okay. Hmm. Not bad, it's a little much, but again, just go in. I uh, might have to hit edit gradient, and this is the freeform gradient tool. So let's move on, right? Because I have this awesome image, right? The cool thing is, this is a cloud document that's actually being saved in the background, okay? So if we go to Illustrator, up to preferences, let's go into, there we go. Same play, well, uh, no, actually, just underneath performance, we have file handling and clipboard. So right in here, automatically save cloud documents every five minutes. 
So that's what's happening right now. So um, it's saving every five minutes. I can change that interval if I want to. Uh, that's why you'll sometimes see this little, you'll see this little save icon pop up, up in the corner. Uh, but that's what's happening right now. Let's go out to our file and out in the browser, cross our fingers. Come on, it's a big file. That's, I was showing off with graphics and uh, my file got a little large. So we will just wait for that to do its thing. Oh, here's a key thing to look out for. If you ever notice that something isn't syncing, go in here, um, check to make sure that you're signed into the right account. So that's the biggest problem that people might have, and it's a problem I might be having right now. Uh, as I open up Creative Cloud, I actually have two different accounts, so that's my problem. I'm logged in in the browser with another one, so give me one second. It's actually out there. Let's sign out. I apologize. It's not that it's that slow. It's that I'm, I'm an idiot. That's all. Uh, what's a GPU? What is GPU? It's a gra uh, graphics processing unit. Hopefully, I don't know if anybody answered that, but it means it's using the hardware of your laptop as opposed to the software. So it's gonna run faster. Oh, there's all my stuff. Silly two accounts. Oh, there's a fancy koi fish. Oh, what's up? Koi fish. It looks like a goldfish. It's interesting fact about koi fish, guys. If you put them in a fishbowl, they'll only grow as large as the fishbowl. You put them in a lake, they'll grow like three feet. So it'll grow everywhere from like only up to three inches up to like, well, I don't know if it's really three feet, but easily up to like a foot, a foot long for these koi, which is pretty impressive. Uh, we can jump in here and, so, and they could say, make less red, right? Like what the heck are you talking about when you say something less is less, should be less red? Well, we'll place a pin right here, boom, on the cheek. We know to change that because I might be working with an art director that can go ahead and add that comment. By the way, I'm gonna share this with you just so you know, share a link to this koi fish. Why not copy? Let's add commenting or allow commenting, right? Copying that link. Uh, is Paul okay? I hope so, seeing as that's me and I'm telling you I'm okay. Hopefully that works or do you have to ask somebody else? <laughs> uh, how to convert a goldfish into a koi fish, zoom in. <laughs> uh, but that's actually the one thing I wanna do is I wanna shift the colors entirely based on comments. So feel free, if you wanna jump into that, by the way, into that file, you guys can add, I know Tim did this yesterday, but feel free to add as many comments as you want, right? Make less red, right? More cowbell. All right, I'll see what I can do there, my friend. Appreciate it. Uh, the fish looks kind of sad. Can we make the fish happy, right? Um, maybe uh, we can draw right here, like I'm doing right now, and I can say, can you bend this up, right? We know exactly what's being talked about. As you select it, notice how it will highlight that. We can see all the comments appropriately. Can I get fries with that? Why yes, Steve. Or sorry, Festus, why yes, Festus. Why yes, okay, there we go, boom, did it. We'll make those changes to that same file, by the way. I love um, like internet-based files, like cloud documents, because I, uh, hopefully my audio is syncing, because I often, um, I'll misspell something and it's embarrassing if you have to send the client another uh, another PDF. Sorry, my hair is a little weird right here. I'm just noticing it. So embarrassing. Um, do you have to have Adobe account to comment on artwork? No, you don't. But let's take a look at that, by the way. You don't. In fact, right up here, anybody with this link uh, is able to see it and you could see which links are available. Now, when it comes to InDesign, InDesign just launched a feature that allows you to control the link a little more finely, like uh, have it password protected or maybe you only allowed certain, only allow certain Adobe ID, IDs to access a file. Oh, I don't know, thanks Tim. It's like poking out here and it's like annoying me. This needs to go up there. All right, so. All right, now he's angry. Make it pop. Oh, I love it. Let's make it pop, shall we? 
Uh, by the way, feel free to update Illustrator. Again, we updated it two days ago. Uh, just refresh that app or restart it, just so you know. Uh, let's go back in here. Here we are. Okay, we can make those changes and then it's going to update. It's gonna be pretty straightforward, to be honest with you. So edit gradient, bam, there we are. Let's take out the rosiness. Again, I was not happy with it. You guys should have told me not to do that. Right, let's change the color entirely. Let's make it pop. Hey, Steve says, or somebody said make it pop. I don't know if it was Steve, but let's make it pop. So it's just gonna be uh, mean making some quick changes. So let's go burst. Hopefully I haven't any, oh yeah. Use CC libraries all the time. I use this burst like all the time. In fact, let's do that one more time. Burst. Let's place a copy right there. Make it pop. Yeah, baby. Let's do this. Let's rotate it a little. And let me get into some more features. But again, I just wanted to kind of tackle uh, cloud documents because I'm gonna make this change and hopefully you'll be into it. Let's go, since this is just a web file, I'm gonna change this to overlay, which happens to be my favorite blend mode. Bam, make it pop. There we are, does that work? Saving the file, right? Saving koi fish, uh, illustrator, cloud document, making it pop, making it dynamic, going out here. Oh, by the way, uh, let's go right over here. We'll have it update in a second. I don't even have time to drink my coffee. It's already updated, silly file. Give me a second to fix my hair, jeez. Right, there it is. I like it, but I don't love it. Look at, <laughs> listen to you guys quote uh, the hovering art director. I love it. Bam. There we are, okay. And you know what, we can submit those, we can resolve them. I like it, but I don't love it. That's my favorite. I wanna be able to favorite comments because I love that one, right? But even these that are kind of annoying, let's just go ahead and just resolve that and make that disappear, you know, resolve that. Here's our, again, our new file. Oh, clean this up for sure. Where's my clipping mask, huh? What's my problem? Let's get a clipping mask. You know, a good way to get rid of that, just kind of zoom in like so and uh, maybe that will work out a little bit better. So you don't notice it. But this is, what I, this is what I like. This is cool, right? Check this out. What do we have over here? Oh, going from comments. Yeah, we can get info on the file. You can see when I uploaded it and we have a timeline. So a timeline from when we first started working on it. In fact, I'll click right here and I'll load in that first file that was drab before it was popping. So what do we do? Uh, drab version, no pop, right? Up to this current one that we can also bookmark, okay? So we have versioning right in here, which is nay. Bam, that's what we'll call it. We'll just call it bam, done, right? So close that. Let's take a look actually in Illustrator, by the way, because we can open up in Illustrator window go down to version history, and sure enough, we have that same version history in this panel, right, which is awesome. So we'll have those marked versions. I agree with Tim, this desperately needs a clipping mask. So let's just kind of draw this over it like so. Select and clean it up, clean up that junk, much better, right? Hopefully you agree, right? I'm really into it, saving the file. You got it. Uh, tch, 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 tch. It looks like a weird antenna in my hair, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yesterday, was it yesterday that I just wore a nice, a nice dress shirt and then I had just running shorts on. So I thought I looked uh, ridiculous. Yes, Carol, thank you so much. Yes, it has a history now, right? Guess what? What did I enter in the browser? Bam, there it is. Right, here's the latest one, let's do this. And this is the one with the clipping mask. So we can type in clipping, C-L-I-P-P-I-N mask, right? Just on the background, whatever I wanna do, bookmark that accordingly, right? And we can roll back, right? Is this not amazing? This is where I pause for applause as if I actually made the feature. I didn't. I'm just, tr what, trying to take credit for all these, the hard work engineers do, right? This is super cool. Let's move on because I have more to talk about. Uh, 
So right in here, if you click on this, we could rename this version. This is just version history. You can't see the comments, Tim, to your point. Uh, InDesign has that feature. So that's InDesign's new feature is uh, share for reviews. So InDesign is kind of setting the bar when it comes to reviewing, but that's more like you definitely need it in InDesign because you're constantly, you could be dealing with a multi-page like a magazine. Keeping track of all the comments in a magazine is, is vitally important. Um, if you, uh, a little hack, what you could do is you could actually bring this, um, you could bring this into Il into into InDesign, and then you could do a share for review view from InDesign, even though it's an Illustrator file. So that might be a good idea. Uh, uh, Thirty for straight. Thirty exactly. Oh, by the by the way, like I wish I had more time to drink coffee, Howard. By the way, uh, burst. Another thing you'll notice, because I used to take breaks sometimes when things are opening, it's like, oh, I get to drink coffee or fix my hair because it's kind of jacked up right here. It's really annoying me, right? Go to file new. You'll notice how fast this new dialogue opens up. So it's easily like 10 times faster, right? Uh, which is awfully nice. Um, so hopefully you're into that. Again, that's when I used to fix my hair. This is my fix my hair, drink a cup of, drink a, uh, drink, take a drink of coffee by going to file new and this pops up instantaneously. So that's all I got for you. Closing there, there we go. Let's take this and I'm thinking, okay, I would love to have this maybe at different sizes. Let's go ahead and unlock a lot of this stuff. I got highlights in here. I have so many things. Let's get rid of these background layers. Who knows what's going on, right? Uh, this is, need to fix this. Let's make this a different size, Zoop, like that. Here's this version. I'm gonna make a couple different versions, by the way. Uh, using my artboard tool, I'm gonna make sure this is turned on, right? So this is selecting all the contents of your artboard, the artwork and Command-C, oh, command Command-V. I just did a paste. Wait for it. I got a little, a little, little greedy and a little quick there, so we'll just give it a second because I drew another artboard. But I duplicated this artboard, right? That's, that's pretty straightforward where I can like resize this and all this fun stuff, right? Here's my taller version, why not, okay? If you happen to have a new file, file, new. Right? We can now copy artboards from one to the next. So you can copy artboards. Best way to show this is to kind of tile it, just so you know. So now I have this one, this artboard, which I actually didn't grab. I didn't make the artboard bigger, just made the artwork bigger. But there it is. We can copy that and bring it over to my second file and paste it. So you can copy and paste artboards across files. It's just those little things that you want to work and maybe if it doesn't then you have an issue <laughs> right uh where's the history option oh thank you for mentioning that let me show you window it's clear down here it's not called history it's called version history right it's right there so it's down there at the bottom okay <sighs> artboard copy oh did i just paste this a couple times I might have saving data recovery information I have a big file that I was messing with I hope you guys like this all right copy and paste that into a new file that's actually what I want to do um, is I want to go beyond just that copy and paste we've come to expect that uh, why do I have I have this artboard Oh, I accidentally duplicated an artboard. Let's delete one. There we are. I had one right on top of the other. But there's my two artboards. That's fine. I can copy and paste them. This is actually what I want to do. You ready for this? It's like, let's take this. We want to put this on the side. Let me turn off highlights. Those highlights are way too detailed for me to mess with. Let's just take this content, copy it. Let's go to File, New. You ready for this? This is another top request. Uh, wait for it. File, New. All right, anybody dealing with like sort of large document formats, right in here. This is what you do have to do. Uh, you're not gonna do it from your control bar at the top, but right up here, 
if we want a large document format, as in feet on top of feet, almost like 200 feet, it's actually 2,270 inches, is the new large document format that we have uh, available. So this, you can now have your files 100 times larger than they were. So the size of a huge billboard. I can take that, click create, and here's my new file, this large document, okay? Pasting in my original. Look at how small my original. Is it even there? Jeez, it's pasted in. Let's make sure I have everything selected because I think I did something weird. Select all, copy. Copy all those beautiful vectors. Let's paste it in right here. So let's go back out. There it is. Paste. All right, so I have it pasted in. Look how small that is. I'm just doing this. Thank you for doing the math because there's no way I was gonna do that math. But either way, or whatever you did there, look at how small this is. That's the size I was working at before was this size and I scaled it up 200 feet because I decided I wanted uh, this koi to be uh, attacking Denver, Colorado, uh, you know, having it on the side of a building. Good morning, Mario. Good to have you here. Uh, we have a full day, by the way. Let me just kind of quick quickly cover the uh, schedule if I could. There it is, here's the schedule. Just so you know what's happening, apologize to all the other presenters today. But um, yeah, so we have Kathleen up after me. Character design with Hank Washington, so that's gonna be really fun. I don't know Hank, I think it's gonna be cool to hang out with him. Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge, a uh, little editorial design after that, which is cool. XD as well with Andrea. Um, yeah, draw along with Kyle as well. Kyle's gonna be using uh, probably Fresco, maybe Photoshop, which that brings up another topic, which is uh, using mobile. So I'll get into that in a second. All right, so I'm still scaling up this file, by the way. Let's scale it up a little, not a little more, a lot more. Bam, baby, look at this. Wait for it. See, I think with some of those performance stuff and size uh, things like this, requirements, amazes people who have been in the industry a while. The fact that I just took this, I sized it up, actually it's even larger um, than uh, 200 feet, but anyways, I just scaled this up and it's ready to go. Synthil, good to have you here. Uh, you're not finding version history. If you're not finding it, make sure you have the latest version. So. Uh, Adobe Illustrator, technically it's 24.2 is what I have, but make sure you have the latest version, right? It's gonna be Illustrator 24.2, you can see it right here, okay? So that's the version we're working with, and that's where it will be version history. Cool, here's our large document format, awesome. All from our fast new file, new dialog box. Um, let's move on, because I want to Talk, talk about, um, uh, yeah. Uh, just reading questions as well. So I, I just mentioned uh, Kyle and I mentioned Fresco and uh, I wanted to kind of switch over to mobile for a second since I'm sure you're eager to get into this. And then I wanna get into a bunch of pro tips. And thanks for joining me over on YouTube. So hop over to behance.net live. Uh, cool. You'll know you have the latest version as well by, if you look at the doc right down here, you'll see all these new icons like so, okay? So that's the short of it. That's how you know it's updated. All right, let's move on. Looks gorgeous, let's move on. Let's kind of take a look at how this was actually originally created, <sighs> which was in, wait, for it, people. Let me share my screen. Ah, oh, OK. 
Okay. Sorry about this. Waiting for this to update. And I was actually given permission to show some of the interface as well. So let's just wait for this to update. Cool. Let's switch over, shall we? Uh, here we are. Cool. I was drawing a couple other fish as well, but let's open up this one for instance. Please be good to me. There we go. I have things kind of turned off, uh, but this is Illustrator on the iPad, right? I've found this out to be just like so nice to work with, right? So let's dive into this, shall we? We have all of our tools that we'd expect on our side. And again, this is not meant to be a demo. I'm just gonna quickly show you. Uh, come in here, maybe just change uh, the fill to nothing. The stroke is just gonna be black. And then I can start kind of drawing. It's my favorite thing about uh, Illustrator on the iPad is this line work as I go in and start to draw out these curves like I'm doing right now. Sort of the basis of a fish. And of course we grab and can see each one of those points, right? I can add points, everything as you'd expect by the way, right? In here, just grab the pen. There's no plus uh, pen to opt tool to add a point. Right, you just tap on the line. So it's like InDesign for, for that reason. Right, and come in and just add a couple points. Use the direct selection tool. Come in and manipulate this accordingly. Kind of bring that out. Trying to make this look like a fish head. Something like that, okay? So there's my line. Let's go ahead and add a circle for the eye. There it is, like so. Add another one. There's the highlight. Because it doesn't look realistic till you get the highlight in there. It's looking kind of weird. Let's grab again the um, pencil fill. I'm going to try to do this really fast just to give you an idea. This fish is looking kind of lame. But I think you have to respect all these smooth lines that it's creating. Let's fix this mouth. That, we wanna add some lips to it. I can do that as well. I'll work on that some more later. Boy, this is like a lot of pressure, everyone. I mean, give me some more room in here. Let's do some nice flowy work. Like that connecting those lines like so. Right, you have any issue with anyone, any one of these lines, you can jump in. You have the ability to round those uh, sharp edges or corners, just like you would on the desktop, right? Just like I did there. I could also jump in, grab that point as well, bring it up and adjust the bezier points just as easily, right? Independently in this case, to make it like that. All right, you get the idea. Hopefully this is making sense. Uh, again, I'm trying to uh, add a little bit more to this in a short amount of time. So let's just kind of add a new layer. I have a number of layers in here already. Let's add a new one behind the current layer like that. And we'll have a, just another like, and kind of come out like that. There we have it. Okay, so here's probably one of my favorite, this is probably one of my favorite features. Check this out. Let's go in here, let's tap on this. Okay, so what would happen um, if I deleted this Bezier point, would it change the shape or would it not? Well, let's find out because I'm going to go ahead and select the remove Bezier point right there. It changes it. It changes it slightly. And just to show you, when you delete those Bezier points using that tool, 
it will keep the shape but simplifies the line, which I think is pretty darn sweet. Okay, let's go in here, let's change that to white, right, and we can add some color. This is looking ridiculous, I get it. I'm kind of embarrassed, to be honest with you. Help me, someone, it's so bad. Right, I'm just using the pencil. I could also come in and if you're comfortable with the Bezier pen tool, you could do the same thing and have all that sort of control that you'd expect. Right. There we go. Open up the layers panel, twirl that down. Which one was I working on? Oh, I was working on this one. Let's drag it beneath everything else, except for that other layer. You get the idea. This needs work. Uh, when is this available? It's a great question. Probably the most common question we get. The answer is we don't know because we're still working on it. So probably by the time I'm done fixing my hair, it'll be ready, which means it'll never quite be ready. Just kidding. Uh, you're gonna have to give us some time because we are working on it as we speak, okay? Uh, let's just take this fish. I know it's a sad excuse for a fish. Let's go ahead and group it together. There we have our lovely fish. Let's shrink this down. We wanna turn this one fish into a school of fish. We can do that a number of ways because I like this tool right over here. We can do a radial repeat, right? Selecting radial repeat and all of a sudden we get a school of fish as you can see, right? We can have them swim around. Let's actually put this more in the center like so. And again, you get the idea. We have this school of fish that we're working on that we can have them sort of at different angles. And not only that, we can have as many as we want or as few as we want as I start to control this, right? So yeah, we have a nice fish wreath into it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's connect us with a buzzer. I would love to be able to read all the chat. If I missed a question, feel free to type it in there. I'm so sorry, Steve. Uh, did we get the iPad version with subscription too? There's nothing concerning pricing or anything like that, so I don't have any word. But I think it, it would be smart if you just look historically, you know, and say, hey, what did we do with like Photoshop uh, on the iPad and uh, what's happening there, right? So that's just kind of a hint at what we would probably do. Okay. But again, I'm not telling you anything because honestly, we don't know. We haven't figured that out yet. I don't think we're at the I don't, I don't know where we're at with that, right? It's, it's above my pay grade to say either way, everyone. I just said, hey, can I show this off? And they're like, yeah, sure, as, uh, as long as you make something cool. And I'm like, nah, we'll see. Because <laughs> apparently this is pretty lame, <laughs> right? I have other versions of other things that I've made that are pretty cool. Uh, but the cool thing is I can always jump in if something is not looking right, even if it is using this um, radio repeat, just like right in here, this needs to be filled in like so course it's going to fill it in everywhere and now we have these fun dancing fish right uh are they going to be on the surface mm, i don't i do not know actually won't is an illustrator already available on surface pro i could be wrong um all right Yes, Daniel, you like the uh, the interface for Illustrator on the iPad. Uh, is there, yeah, so I don't know if there's a plan to make it available on the Surface, right? So there we have that. There's other options we could do as well. Um, even if I wanted to take like some bubbles, for instance, if I wanted to have a bunch of, actually, you know what I probably wanna do is I would wanna add, add a bunch of waves. So let's do that real fast. Come in here, everything that you'd expect. So it's been really natural for me to work in here because I'll lock down that background, you know, and uh, make a new layer just above it to just have some like water lines, right? So let's remove that. Let's make these water lines white and we'll just come in with the pencil and just quickly do a nice organic shape like so. Next up, we'll go ahead and do a grid repeat. Howard knows this all too well because this starts to use, uh, ooh, geez. It starts to work like um, repeat grid in XD, okay? All right, so anyways, what just happened there is a reason why we're not shipping today, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. And that's why we're not shipping it yet. <laughs> we're still working on it. Now, come back to me la desktop. Where did my laptop go? <laughs> 
Ah. Uh. All right. Uh, let's move on because we also have Fresco in terms of creating vector content. I want to show you the difference between those two. Hold on one sec. And we're back. Cool. All right. And actually what I want to show you is uh, what some really cool people cooler than me have actually made on the iPad as I... All right, and we're back. So I think that's cool. I ran an ad. <laughs> I just thought I'd show you what other people have made, people that are cooler than me, just so I can uh, relaunch this and uh, start to tackle this. By the way, so let's excuse this sad excuse, honestly, for uh, a fish and turn on like the line drawing for what I originally made. So hopefully that's coming in but I did this all with the pencil, okay? Just did this with Apple Pencil and the pencil um, uh, tool in Illustrator on the iPad. All right, let's go in here. We have color selections. Again, this isn't meant to be a full demo. I just kind of want to complete this and uh, just get it to uh, somewhat of a place where I like it. Again, locking down that background, selecting all this line work. Look at all this lovely line work. Grouping that together. This is pretty complex, by the way. There it is, one gorgeous fish. There we go. There's our fish. Uh, let's put this fish in some water. Adding a new layer and uh, drawing with the pencil the color of white. And I could still use the um, pen tool, but all I really want is just like an organic pattern back there. That's probably a little bit too organic, to be honest with you. Let's undo that. Let's click. Let's work through this. Make it look a little bit more equal. Notice each time I draw something, I get the angles, so I know if I have this straight or not. And let's go right there, sure. There's our waves. Let's go right down here. We'll do a grid repeat. Ah, and then it will go ahead and do a repeat grid. All right, let's switch to my desktop. I'm back on my desktop. Cool. Here we are. It's a little weird. Hold on one second. Sorry, everyone. I'm back, there we go. It's full screen now. Uh, here we are. So uh, transferring this to the desktop, by the way. So that's why we have cloud documents to open it up. But uh, I'll just show you, I think I actually have that file on my 
uh, on my desktop already. Here's the line work, right? So you get the idea. Again, pretty smooth lines. All right, the whole screen is pixelated. Yeah. Uh, okay. There you go. Hopefully it's better now. Uh, what a happy chat morning. All right. When you group, does it decrease the file size? No, it doesn't. It just groups all of those assets. So what I would have done is I would have grouped this together just so I could do a radial repeat or anything like that, a repeat grid, whatever. So that just gives me that flexibility. There's more going on in Illustrator on the iPad. Again, uh, from a, an artist, I, I think that it's best to actually like work on an iPad and get that really clean line work because some of you might think, oh, can't you use Fresco for that, right? First off, I didn't even get into the type that you can get. So you can make your own logos and add typography in there all day long, right? Um, but if we, for instance, used uh, Fresco, Fresco does have a vector brush, as some of you may know. So if I come in here and start to draw a fish in Fresco, these are all filled lines, right? They're not quite what I want, right? In my opinion, for, for what I'm doing, right? Here's that, like that, zoop. You get the idea. These are all filled lines. So I could actually export this out as a, not as a PSD, a PDF, send it to my desktop, and we'll get those filled lines, right? So that's essentially what's gonna happen when you use Fresco as of today. So here's the PDF. Let's open that up in Illustrator. We can see this is not what I want, right? Let's ungroup it. Or release the clipping mask, right? Do you guys see that? Look at this. I don't really want this. Let's compare this. Uh, the iPad resolution is pixelated. I'm so sorry, everyone. I thought it looked kind of bad. My iPad resolution was a little pixelated. I feel terrible. I am so sorry. Ah, I am so sorry. Fixed it. Anyways, so we have right here on the desktop. These same lines, right? Look at all of these various uh, different points, all these Bezier points in here, right? This is what I actually don't wanna deal with. Compare that to the outline that I did in Illustrator on the iPad. Look at these lines, right? This is the artwork, here's the lines. Look at this, this is exactly what I want. Let's take a look at how clean these are right in here. Oh, perfect. How many? Three points. I'd expect that to have three points, which is awesome. So that fidelity you get with the line, the flexibility, it makes it so easy to work in Illustrator on the iPad. Okay. Ah, uh, so sorry about the... Uh, All right, you got it. Peace. So hopefully you guys got that. I'm checking the time. Um, I think we have the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge up in uh, about 40 minutes. Awesome, that gives me more time. In fact, I might jump right into this. And I'm sorry, it seems like the screen was pixelated. Uh, I might launch this one more time just so you guys can see what this looks like in all of its beautiful glory. In fact, I might even show you this version. Wait for it, I know I'm not sharing my screen yet. Wait for it. All right, let's switch back. Here we are. So hopefully this looks better. Hopefully this resolution is better. Here's just a different version of that fish. We'll take a look at the color that we have in here, right? And we have a couple things we can do. So I actually did most of the line work on my iPad and then I did all the coloring on my desktop. You could work any way you want. Uh, notice how I have this here, right? I have the fill colors that I can pick from over here, or you can actually pick them off to the side. Doesn't really matter. 
Uh, you have different stroke, um, thickness, everything that you kind of expect, but I think it's good just to take a look at uh, what you can do right in here. The fill, the stroke, the blend mode. Cool. It's kind of a goldfish, it kind of is. It's supposed to be a koi fish. Uh, look at that, we can read the text. It's so clear, it's so nice. Okay, so again, we're all friends here. This might, might give me problems, it might not, we'll see. All right, so here, yes, you guessed it. We have a radial gradient. So we can come in and edit. Let's change this color to more of a red and the inside to more of a like gold color, right? Like I'm doing right now. Also, so again, we're still testing this. Freeform gradients right in here. Boom, adding a color right there as I'm doing right now. Look at that, let's move that over here. Now right off on this side, oh, sorry about that. Tap that, let's add some, oh yeah. Another point right over here. Let's make this more red. I don't know, kind of like that. There we go. You guys see what I'm doing? I'm actually adding these freeform gradients on the iPad. <laughs> yeah, the gradients are exciting, aren't they? I think they're cool. Add another one right there. And tweak that accordingly. All right, you get the idea. You have these freeform gradients that you could add to anything. So that's what I would do for all of this. Clicking on this part, yeah. Go in, gradient, freeform gradient. This color, red. This color, more white. You get the idea. Maybe in the middle, we will add another point. as we work on this some more. Maybe we'll just change this to the gold, okay? You guys get the idea. Hopefully you're impressed. I'm done with this. Uh, the drawing is so, well, the, the drawing capabilities is really nice. This whole piece needs more work, right? Um, everything to just more freeform gradients. Maybe I'll just do a radial gradient right in here because I know actually it's gonna be a little faster for me. Take that to the orange. In fact, I keep on sampling colors. I could actually use the swatches down at the bottom to make sure I get that right color, uh, like I'm doing like so. Let's make that a little larger. Let's add another midpoint, and we'll throw uh, a little orange right in there. See, this is so nice to work on. I like being able to sit down and finally get to season three of um, True Detective, and uh, be able to get some work done on an iPad without having a laptop awkwardly placed around me. It's just like so much more chill and uh, easy to work with, right? So there that is. Add another color stop like so. We'll make this one a little more red. Cool, starts to come to life. Let's add a little highlight right in here. And let's make sure we're on top of everything. Let's go right up at the top there. There we go, just a little highlight, done. Okay, cool. There it is. All right. Let's move on, shall we? Uh, turn it into a blue Tetris. Tre 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 a blue treatress? What is that? 
My goal is to have a bunch of koi fish kind of all kind of interacting. I mean, I have a whole big plan for this, just so you know, but this is only the beginning of it. But also notice that here it is on my desktop, right? So again, just kind of being able to seamlessly work from desktop, from mobile to my desktop. Guess what? All those gradients that I was just working on, all those freeform gradients are available right in here, right? I can take each one of these and adjust more if I want to, right? Easy enough. Easy, easy, okay, it's good. It still looks like a goldfish, I get it. I probably need to change the colors drastically. So now I'm gonna just get into some features that you should know about so you can make cool stuff when you're ready. Let's actually go over to my, um, Oh, man, let's go to this one. Actually, what I ended up doing here is I ended up adding lots of gradients, lots of fun stuff, all the fun things to make like this version, right? We can see it right in here. This, I did a lot of this on the desktop, right? So we have those gradients on those lines and all that good stuff, right? That looks good. We can uh, take a look at some other things that we could add in here. So first off, if I wanted to change the color of this entirely, I'll select this fish, we'll go to edit, we'll go to edit colors, and we'll go into, you guessed it, recolor artwork right here, bam. Save the file, oh, yes please, story of my life. Look at all these, look at all these colors that I have. Uh, I'm gonna lock this down, I'll just shift it. We can shift this and make it more red, more purplish. This is looking really exciting to me, I love, I love purples and, ah, this looks awesome, right? So this is cool. This is what I'm going for. I'm into this. In fact, you know what? Let's take all this. Let's be bold. Let's just put this all on one layer, shall we? There it is. Um, yeah, it's uh, maybe, I don't know, some sort of exotic fish. Let's group it together. Here's one. Paste another one in, and we'll get to modifying it as well. UV fish, exactly. I was thinking, geez, does this one look like, uh, you know, it was swimming in like some toxic waste or something, or what? Uh, a lot of times for these tools right over here, if you just double click on them, bam, bam, that's how I usually flip things, say vertically, for instance, right? Now we have the two fish. Let's actually flip this one once more horizontally like so, and now we can have these two fish kind of intertwining. For this one, we will, edit the colors one more time. Uh, notice how I get all these colors, and all these colors are very similar. You can say, hey, you know what, make this, just give me five colors, right? And that's what it's doing now. It's constraining that just to five colors, right? We can go in now, edit this, lock it down, shift it over. We still want it to be like electric. Did I select everything? I might not have selected all those colors. Either way, let's go in here, edit colors. Let's just twist this a little bit, turn it a little bit this way. That is interesting. It's actually not quite changing that other, that, that freeform gradient for some reason. All right. All right, so let me do this one more time. I apologize, everyone. Hopefully everybody's having a wonderful day. What's up? If you're new here, feel free to say what's up or hello. This is our black light fish that we're playing with. Let's try this one more time. It's very interesting how it's not quite changing what I need, but that's okay. All right, let's go with that. Ooh, I know, I think I might know what happened. Either way, here's our two fish. It's okay. I get it, it's okay. Maybe we'll just still stick with this one. Okay, for this fish, we're gonna have some bubbles kind of coming out. Again, I'm just gonna show you some quick features, some of my favorite things, right? Um, really fast. 
Uh, hopefully most of you know that like if I did want to have a little burst coming out from the center, I can select a star tool. I used a burst that I had in my uh, library, but I can come in here and say, hey, you know what? With the star, I can click and drag, right? I get this outline, right? I can use the up arrow to add more points. Hopefully everybody can see that. I'm sorry, it's kind of hard to see, right? Up arrow will add more points, right? As you can see, let's turn off that background so we can see this even better, right? And if you hold down the command key, we can stretch it out. So each one of these spires is even longer. So when uh, Festus or Steve, whoever said, make it pop, like give it a burst, well, essentially that's what I'm doing here, taking a star, right? And now we have something that has a burst like so, right? We'll turn this back on. We can see that gorgeousness like so for our superhero fish in this case, right? Bringing it like so. Let's do one more thing as well. Maybe that doesn't work for us. We're gonna use the same star, okay? Here's our star, and in this case, I'm going to just go into my swatches, pick a different color. Let's go with this one. And um, I'm gonna draw out a, a burst, but this time what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, hold down the tilde key. The tilde key is a little squiggly line. So let's just turn off that fish so you can see it. I'm gonna click and then I'm gonna hold down the squiggly line and I'm gonna drag. And now we have even more of a burst because they said make it pop even more. And now we could do something like that to make it pop even more, okay? Uh, is that a standard option regarding the burst? Yes, it is. So with the star up and down arrows, right? We'll change the points. Command key, you can change the spires. Another thing you could do is you could just click, by the way, if you just click, you're gonna get settings for it as you can see right here. Okay, cool. So yeah, it does create a lot of movement, I feel like. This is nice and energetic. Um, might be a little much. This is like, this is, a, this is a lot, right? Let me do one more for you, okay? Let's do another burst really fast. Let's take a circle or an ellipse for this ellipse. Here it is, it's just a simple line. What we're gonna do here is we are going to go into the stroke like so, and we're gonna make this a dash line. We're gonna give this a dash line. We're gonna give it every like 60. The dashes are uh, 60 pixels and the line's 60 pixels, right? Um, maybe even 80, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna increase the weight to like 500. And now we have our burst from a line into this magical burst, as you can see here. Heck, let's go up to 800, like so. We have that burst right there. And yes, we can jump in and like change that color if we want to, something like that, okay? And that's just done with a simple line. I like simplicity, it's a good thing, right? We have our electric fish. Who knows where it's from? Thank you, Afroja likes it. If you like it, Afroja, works for me thanks for joining me today uh changing that blend mode like so let's give this some bubbles right in here so we will just add uh just another layer let's draw out this bubble really fast we'll make it white we'll zoom in here on our gorgeous fish and we will reset this that's for darn sure Appearance panel, that is another thing. Let's like, you could always, if you draw something and you're like, oh no, it is so crazy. It actually has those burst lines that I was just using. You can go to your appearance panel and you can reduce something down to its basic appearance, right? I've just reduced this down to its basic appearance, which is just a circle, right? So if things get out of hand, you and just wanna reset it from the top, you have that from the appearance panel. So that looks pretty good. We could increase the line, but what we wanna do is we wanna give this a little bit of a gradient, which is gonna be a gradient burst, right? A radial burst that's white to transparent, like so. Oh, I always do that as well. Let's take this, let's flip it. Let's give this a color. Flip the colors, there we are. Increase this. This is what I usually do, by the way. 
and then let's go ahead and move this over to give it a highlight. So that's all we're doing. Another thing, if you really wanna sell this, cause this is a solid line. I don't think this solid line is that impressive for a bubble. I'll go up here and I'll change the uniformity of the line. So we'll go ahead and curve that. It's the first width profile and this makes it look more like a bubble, right? So that's all I'm going for, something kind of simple like that. And this is what I wanna do is I wanna put many of them down, right? So uh, maybe you'll come in here and Again, let me just change this opacity, by the way, because it's a little intense. There we are, cool. For this bubble with this selected, I'm gonna turn it into a symbol. So I'm gonna drop it into the symbols panel. We'll call it Bubblelicious, there it is. Grab grabbing the symbol sprayer tool, selecting the symbol that we want, and then we can go ahead and paint in, if you will, a bunch of bubbles like I'm doing right now. Okay, uh, my fish looks like a blob. Uh, this fish looked like a blob. If you, if you replay the first 10 minutes back, you'll see a big fish blob that I made. <laughs> okay, so this has been in here a while, by the way. This symbol sprayer tool, right? We get it. We can also shift, scrunch, change the size. Right? In fact, if you just double click on this tool, notice that Illustrator's tools have a bunch of other tools and options right in here. So here they all are. It's like you could hold down uh, the shift key to bring the instances forward. What I wanna do is I wanna work on the sizes. So I'm gonna hold down the option key to adjust the size, right? Uh, so that's usually what it is for most of them. So that's all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, hold down the option key, make it, oh, oh, gotta select the right one. Symbol sizer, hold down the option key to shrink them up. So they're maybe gonna be smaller and then they're gonna get bigger right out here. So I'm just varying the size as you can see and there we have our nice little bubbles. Uh... <laughs> yeah, this would be great on the back of deck of cards. I've, I've kind of in, in my back pocket, I would love to make a deck of cards. That's kind of like on my list of things to do is to design a bunch of playing cards, but I like your idea there. Steve, good call. Uh, let's go ahead and recolor artwork. I'm gonna shift this back a little bit because I think everybody's saying is it looks too electric. Let's see what I can do here. That's fine. It's gonna stay electric. All right, blobfish are a thing. Oh, are you talking about that blobfish that, uh, I think I know what photo you're talking about uh, online. So here this is, what we could do is we can add some text to it, right? So I'll jump in here and again, I've gone beyond what's new, cloud documents, large canvas size, enhanced free distort, which I'll be doing as well, and getting into some features that you should just know about. So um, come in here, select a font increase the size, and let's take a look in the properties panel. Uh, by the way, oh yes, Kathleen's up next. Kathleen, yeah, everybody's gonna see you in about 20 minutes. So right in here, we can go with, actually, this is gonna be fascinating. Let's try decorative. And just see what we get. Uh, I want something with a little bit of flavor, but nothing too crazy. All right, what are your thoughts, everyone? How is this? Uh... I think this font is trying too hard. That's the problem with it. Can we all agree? Uh, when you had the dashed lines before the burst, you could turn the lines into bubbles easily. Uh, yes, you're exactly right. If I wouldn't have gone crazy, yes. I mean, I could easily take anything, whether it's a, a bubble or whatever, take anything and turn it into a symbol. So this is all I needed to do. I just made it harder on myself earlier. Drop it into your symbols panel. 
All right, so we know this one is, this font's trying way too hard. I kind of went through a lot of these. This is not bad. I'm open to... Uh, I'm open to uh, opinions. So, okay, so I think I'll just have to leave this up to a vote. Um, it might actually turn this into uh, Kobion. This is what we'll do. This is Kobion Sushi. I'm not even sure if that's how it's spelled. There we go. Okay, we're doing branding. This is not bad. All right, Darius says he likes it. Honestly, he doesn't care. He says he likes it and then he says he doesn't care. So which is it? Do you like it or do you not like it? <laughs> I think script's gonna be too much. I think actually what I wanna do is I wanna put this in a seal. So I wanna take so just like a simple ellipse, right? Zoop. Add a circle, paste on top, shrink this down, uh, take these two, there we go, just made this really fast. I'm kind of thinking I'm going to have this fish inside of this circle, and it's going to be kind of like jumping out of it, right? So we're going to have partially some of it behind, some of it in front, and then we're going to put the text inside. So based on that plan, um, we need to, um, yeah, in a seal. Uh, okay, good, 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 good. All right, so let's do this. Let's get this, let's get this going. Cause I want to talk more about fonts. I want to talk about what you can do with fonts, uh, in general, but, uh, knowing this, we would actually change this font. So let's do that now. Boom. There we are done. Let's move on. What color you want? Blue. You got it. Okay. What, you want to put it inside there? Good, let's go ahead and draw out our circle. Do it. Let's take this text and let's put it on this circle. Type on a path. Yeah, baby. Bam. There we are. Rotate this around, shrink it down right there and change the size. Cool. Ah, all right. Okay, so Jonathan Koo says choose a computer number like font. Yeah, I mean, I could do that. The thing is, I wanna, I wanna stay with the theme, which this is a sushi restaurant, right? We have this text right here. That's why this isn't quite gonna work. I'm still not convinced on this font, but it's actually not bad. What I would like is actually just a little bit of um, character to each one of those uh, letters. But let's go on, let's copy this. Here we have this, oops. And let's try to bring this in. Ah, sorry, my mouse is going really slow for some reason. Let's not worry about that. Let's do this. Let's take this text. Let's sample this text up here. And we'll just put this in a block down below. Because I'm, I'm being a little bit lazy. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, that's the idea. Let's, let's make this look even more 3D, right? So we want to sell that depth. I'm going to put that sushi there in a second. Let's take these two, shrink them down.
we're going to have one behind everything. And then one in front of everything. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and chop this in half. Are you ready? Right in here, a number of tools you can use for that. What I would use in this case is just the knife. I'd grab that knife with that knife selected. I should still have this object selected, selecting the knife, and we'll just cut. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this way at that angle. Slice that in half, and I will delete the top one. There it is, it's deleted. Oh wait, hold on. So sorry, everyone. All right. Okay. There we go. Okay, the problem was I was actually grabbing the text. Okay, so we have that now. Let's turn on uh, most of the things we need, but not everything. Let's turn off that stuff. We'll turn off that burst. We have that bottom part. And then we have that top part. All right, everyone. Sorry, I'm pretty focused right now, trying to clean this up. Uh, yeah, thank you, Tim. Just to remind everybody, there's not gonna be a masterclass tomorrow. We have the day off for Juneteenth, celebrating the end of slavery. Um, just so you guys know, we're like, Adobe is firmly you know, um, the whole idea of racism, stuff like that is uh, pretty close to Adobe's heart, shall I say. It's a pretty important topic for us. So it's brand new, this is like the first time we've ever done this. There we go, I needed to also turn on those settings. Let's move this to the back. And let's just rotate it around. All right, this did not go as fast as I wanted it to, but hey, that happens. Right, there it is. Cool. All right, everyone. Uh, Adobe 8 want peeps mad. Yeah, that's exactly what the public release said. It said it just like that. Adobe 8 want peeps mad. <laughs> ah, thank you. We are committed to making the world a better place, a more beautiful place is what we're trying to do. Even though I can't get this text flipped, I just need to grab this line and pull it in. I did it! Yay! Okay, so this will confuse some people, by the way. So right in here, if I grab that line, all you need to do, that line will highlight when you roll over the text. I don't know, I was having such a hard time with it earlier. And then drag it in, and then in fact you could drag it around. So all I did is duplicate that, because right down here, I want this text to say sushi and stuff, or whatever, <laughs> stuff. <laughs> and other stuff that's good. Sushi and stuff, right? Take that, let's paste it. Since I dragged it in, the circle is actually smaller, so I gotta resize it and uh, just kind of do some adjustments like I'm doing right now. It should actually be on the outside. Right?
There we go. Kobeon, sushi and such sashimi. What I do is I take this text. Uh, if I had a better font. Yeah, why not? Let's go with that one. There we go. Hi. There's my logo. We're set. There we go. I have it. Okay. Cool. Got it? Oh, I, I, I look like Fix-It Felix Jr. <laughs> all right. Must be the blue shirt. I don't know. Okay, so we have this all done. This is all squared away. A uh, couple other things. If I would take this and duplicate it many times and start putting it everywhere, I would maybe run into a problem. So let's do that right now. I kind of want to show you what uh, would happen. In fact, I'm going to show you a magical thing that happens behind the scenes that you may not know about. So let's take this, let's make a clipping mask, finishing up our logo. I love these little bubbles, right? I don't know if they'll actually fit as part of our logo. Let's grab this once more. Let's make this a little larger, right? Let's sample that background. Let's send this to the back with a shortcut key. It's on its own layer, so let's just drag it back here and eliminate this one. All right, checking the time. Oh, I only have five minutes, but we are getting this done, right? So here's our logo. Font needs some work still. Let's come in here. Let's erase this so we could either chop it or we can jump in using the eraser tool. Eraser tool is controlled by your open and closing brackets. You can kind of erase that part for that tail. That's all I'm doing right there. Looks good. Done. We made our logo. Okay. There's our lockup. Taking this, right? We'll paste it. It's one fine unit that we're going to group together and start using multiple places. Uh, yes, Hank Washington is up uh, after Kathleen, so this is going to be really good. Uh, designing some fun characters, specifically some fuzzy characters. Oh yeah, him and Kathleen, so that'll be good. Or excuse me, um, Voodoo Val. Kathleen is up next. So let's take this, deleting that. We could have multiple artboards. A lot of times I actually hide my artboard right here. But let's show them now. So this is actually the artboard I was working on. So what I can do is I can make like um, a, just uh, say a letter size, right? So this is like a letterhead where the logo will be right here. Might have a situation where we have business cards off to the side, right? So we'll have business card. So let's delete that. And this logo will be on that business card as well. Let's paste this in. Let's move this over. I'm gonna get this done. Last little pro tip for you. Um, yeah, please don't go anywhere. A little Photoshop action next. You have your daily creative challenge. And then of course, the... Um, uh, good old Hank Washington. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna duplicate it. I'm trying to. There's like so many vectors on this. But if I do this a number of times and I decide I wanna change the logo, Bring this underneath. This logo is so complex. But imagine doing this like 50 times, right? And I decide that what's weird, you guys notice this? I don't know if anybody caught this. Like this part right here, this is really weird. So I actually need to edit that. I need to edit that little piece and I need to edit it everywhere where this logo is. And chances are you did not make it a a symbol, right? Because a lot of people just don't. I don't either, right? I get it. Um, let's 
but uh, you can come over here and save this as a symbol off to the side. So that's typically what I will do. I'll start doing that, save as symbol, and then use it in multiple places. Let me draw out one more thing. Let me take this, let me duplicate it. There it is. So basically I made a bunch of shapes. I wanted to show you this. Off to the side, there's something called Start Global Edit. If you hit that, it will recognize that shape everywhere it is. You make a change to that shape, it's gonna change it everywhere, right? So I'll adjust this gradient, right? We'll go back and it changes it everywhere. That's global editing, just so you know. And honestly, that's my time. Start global edit. So thanks so much everybody for hanging out with me. Uh, hopefully you appreciate it. I really appreciate you guys hanging out and uh, stay tuned. Kathleen is up next with a little Photoshop daily creative challenge. All right, everyone. Yeah, one minute. Gonna leave you with the schedule. I appreciate you. Everybody have a beautiful day and uh, be kind to one another, huh? Life's too short to not be nice to one another. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a good one and we will talk soon. Thank you.